Welcome to Riker Writes. I am Jay Allen Riker, and this is my series on how to self-publish. Today, we finally get technical because we are going to use the image that you found utilizing my tactics in the last video, or your own tactics, whatever, uh, to make a um, book cover. Right here on screen, you can see the cover of one of my most recent uh, ebooks. So this is the video for the ebook cover um, in the shadows of children. You see that I am really letting the art do the work and the graphic design is pretty minimal, but I do have some, maybe some little tips and tricks, especially if you're not particularly familiar with graphic design that will um, help you create a professional looking uh, cover. Couple things before we really get into it. In the last video, I asked for recommendations of new art portfolio sites. This was left in the comments by a very kind viewer, artstation.com. Now, what I have just clicked around in it this morning a bit, what I found is that it seems to be a portfolio site, although I think anyone can do it, can use it, that it seems to be one that is more professional than deviant art. So rather than skipping over a bunch of stuff that looks too amateurish, you are going to be skipping over stuff that is made by pros that are probably out of your price range um, and stuff that was created actually for use elsewhere. So it's not even available, but I, I think that ArtStation is a growing site where I think the deviant art is more of a um, dying site. So this is going to be a resource that I have, I've bookmarked it for my own use and um, I would suggest you check it out. One other thing that I want to mention is that when we looked at the pre-made book covers, I mentioned that usually you can buy the ebook cover and then buy a paper book cover, like paying the price pretty much again, like they use, maybe they'll cut you, a, they'll charge a little bit less for the paper book cover after you get the ebook cover. And I said that I found that I just need the paper book or the ebook cover, and then I can make the paper book cover. I want to tell you right here, because this is going to be important when we, when you go to select the image that you use to make the ebook cover with, it has to be a big image on those pre-made cover sites. I don't know what the maximum size of the image is, but because paper book prints, because the printing standard is 300 DPI, which is much higher than like the web standard of, I believe, 70 um, DPI. It requires a much larger image. So you need an image that's a lot bigger than what you need to make an ebook. A lot of stock photo websites will give you a choice on the size to use. Go with the bigger size. Go with a size that seems, go with the biggest, <laughs> size that you can reasonably get because you never know when the requirements are going to increase even for ebooks. All right. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and discuss um, the tools that you're going to need. I've gone with all free tools. The first one is Nexus font. Uh, this is a place where you can download it. All you have to do is search Nexus font and you will find it for download. And this will manage your fonts for you and display them for you. This, you'll see why that's important later on. The other program that we're going to use today is GIMP. You might want to be careful just Googling GIMP. Um, it stands for the new image manipulation platform. I think that that's pronounced new. It's um, because it was made for Linux. Um, and they've made it available on other um, operating systems now. So this is essentially the free version of Photoshop. It always, it never is as good as Photoshop. I don't need to hear that. I know that. I do not use even GIMP to its fullest potential. I've had Photoshop before because they have the subscription service now. I'm not going to pay monthly for something that I'm only occasionally going to be using, I'd suggest give GIMP a try and um, see if it fulfills your needs. 
unless you have Photoshop, which by all means, use that instead. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is look at how to get a good font. Depending on your image, you probably have some ideas. So this is going to be, by the way, the graphic design portion and choosing the fonts and all that, it's going to be easier with certain genres. You're just gonna to have to decide for your own genre. If you look at In the Shadows of Children, what I did here, the it looks like a horror book. Horror books very often do not have complex graphic design. It Because it is a more image heavy uh, genre as far as covers go, I think, all the speculative fiction genres can really lean on the image, which means you don't have to do as much graphic design and as much with the fonts. If you're going for something like um, a literary mimetic genre, we'll call it, or um, romance or like urban fantasy, paranormal romance. I mean, if it's not a romantic urban fantasy, it probably doesn't have that big of requirements. So some of these are very design heavy. In which case, unless you're really good at this stuff, you probably just want to buy a pre-made cover. You'll know that best. Okay, so let's look at how to get fonts. I have two sites that I often get fonts from. One of them is defont.com. And I'm going to try to remember to list all of these uh, links to all these resources in the description. So don't worry too much about it. This allows you, so you'll see it's got a bunch of different, you can look for a bunch of different types of fonts. And I put in my name here. That's one of the things that you'll want to find a font for. Um, and I decided I'm writing a Western today, so I have it set to Western. Um, you see uh, that it, I type my name into the preview and I click on 100% free or public domain. That is important. They will, by default, these sites will show you free for personal use. And the problem with that is that you don't want to use it just for personal use. You want to use it for a commercial endeavor and you don't want somebody coming along and saying that you stole their uh, font. Neither do you probably want to pay for a font because um, you're probably gonna use it once. Or if you've got a series, you'll use it for that series, but then um, you're gonna go with whatever is best for the title, whatever goes best with the image. And these are purchases more for if you're a corporation and you intend to use it regularly, is my thought on it. I see donationware here as an option. Um, I don't really know about that, but I would look into that. You can type in to the preview what you want, and then you can see everything once you find one that looks good. You download it, and you see it shows up as a zip file. Now, the majority of these zip files have a README in it, and that README will give you more information on um, the rights that you can expect. What I would suggest that you do is to not install any fonts on your computer that either you don't have the rights to, or that you don't, or that aren't 100% um, free or public domain, because once they're on your computer, you're going and you come across it years later, you're going to forget what the rights are and you're going to have to research it again. Another site that I use other than Defont is 1001fonts.com. And it's got the same uh, sort of option here where you can put your text in and you can look for commercial free. You can filter down by commercial free. Okay, so you grab your font now. How do you get it on your computer? You may think that you just install it into GIMP or something, um, but you actually need to install it on your system. I'm doing going to show you Windows because I use Windows. I have no idea how this is done on a, an Apple product, but as you can see, it's just got a drag and drop install which is very convenient so you just take it from your i think you have to extract it first i don't think that you can drag it straight from the zip file and um, drop it in here and it will install now what you'll see here it organizes it alphabetically it looks like you can filter it by language you can search for a specific font but if you have a specific title and you want to see how it looks on all of the fonts on your system 
this isn't going to do that for you. They, it's got different phrases, I'm pretty sure just provided by Windows. And so that's where this tool comes in, Nexus Font. Nexus Font lets you do the same thing that you did on the font websites, which is you type in a phrase and then you can see it um, here in preview form. Once you've got it narrowed down, which ones you want to look at, then you just filter here on selected instead of all, and it shows you just the ones that you're most considering side by side, um, which is very convenient. You can even change the color, you can change the size. So this will be like a second to the final step in choosing your font. You're going to want to, you may change your mind once you see it on your image, but this is very useful for selecting the font with stuff you already have on your computer. That brings us to GIMP. GIMP is, like I said, the free Photoshop. You can download it here. I don't have the most recent version. I don't believe my, um, so mine will look a little bit different. Okay, so we're in GIMP and we need to start a new file. Okay, so the first, I guess, decision is how big is it gonna be? The uh, dimension that I use for Kindle ebook covers is 1600 by 2560. This is significantly up from when they first started and they were just um, doing ebooks on the e-ink readers. Um, once they created the tablets, it really increased the um, minimum, oops, or at least the ideal size so um, this is the these are the dimensions that we are going to use for uh, our cover today 1600 wide by 2560 tall we go to file new you can see i've already got them in here from the last one here we have our blank canvas this is really tiny okay so this is gonna um, be a visual challenge for me. I have a 4K monitor, but I'm only using a quarter of it to record this, and I'm sitting far away from the screen, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> I would not expect perfection, but the point is just um, to show you how this is done, not you can, you'll be able to do better by spending some time on it. Okay, so we'll take our image and we'll just drag it in. You can see this is extremely, extremely close up of the uh, an image that I showed you in the last video. So what we're going to have to do is make that fit. You do that with the um, stretch or the scale tool. So that's this one right here. Uh, I just hit Shift S to use it. This locks the ratio, which you want to do, because if you don't do that, then it will flatten and squish and stretch as it as you reduce it if you don't do it in perfectly even dimensions. And then if you just drag it, it's going to not be centered. And currently it's centered around. So you want to hold control and it will stay centered. And um, you can move it down to the size of your canvas. Okay. Okay, so here your image is probably not going to be exactly the same size as your canvas, and you're going to want to judge exactly how you want to fit it in. Like mine is a bit wider when it's adjusted to the exact height, and so I have to decide what the uh, optimal placing is. You use this, the moving tool, which is M on the keyboard. We'll switch you to that. And you can use the arrows if you want to make sure that you're just sliding it, say, back and forth. You can use the shift arrow to slide significant amounts. Okay, so in order to show the guy holding his um, makeshift junk spear, I think I'm going to want to uh, go there. I also think it looks nice that the kind of closest is off to the side. Maybe that's some golden ratio stuff. I don't know. Um, I haven't studied this. Okay, so I think this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and try to find a decent font for it. Okay, so this is the text tool. 
and um, let's go ahead and reduce the size of this way down. You'll see that when you use it that you can set things here as the default, but you can also set things um, as you add the, the text. Let's try horror. Horror fonts are kind of, uh, can be a bit over the top, so we'll see. So here, you, I want to just show you what the README file that talks about the rights that you have. Um, what it, they'll each be different. They're made by the different users, so they'll each be different. You can see this is a free font, and I mean free. Use it however you want for whatever you want. If you make something cool with it, I'd love to see it. Email me. Okay, so just to give you a visual example, although I don't think it's too hard, just to give you a visual example, you just grab the font and drag it in to the uh, fonts setting drag and drop to install and you can see it pop up right there so just to let you guys know i was having trouble accessing these fonts after um adding them in the drag and drop method. So I went through and I did install for all. I installed them through the right click menu. So if you're having trouble with them showing up, then give that a try and it um, made them show up for me. Okay, so let's select all these so we can see them side by side. Okay, so we've got our font selected. Now we can see them side by side. Because the image is pretty over the top, I think that a classic monster looking font might be the way to go. I'm reloading GIMP with the hope that it will load the fonts. Um, there are lots of programs don't recognize fonts just from them being added, but need to start when with those fonts installed. But here we have Chainsaw Carnage, which was the first option. So it looks like we've got at least some of them. Let me change the font right here also. For some reason, it's case sensitive. <laughs> we can change our font color. I don't know what would go best here. Go with a sickening green. Um, there's not a lot of green in the cover. We'll choose full saturation and darken it a little bit. I'm reserving the right, by the way, to change all of this as soon as you guys aren't looking. Okay, so we want this the to be smaller. You know what we're going to do first, though? We're going to we're not going to go to all that trouble. Okay, so one problem that you'll find is that if you try to start completely over, it will, unless this has been fixed in, fixed in more recent versions, which I probably should have updated before I started filming this, but we're too far into it now. <laughs> okay, so one problem that you'll notice, at least I just see it in my version of the software, is that if you try to start from the beginning, it will switch back to the default conglomer font. Watch, you can see what I'm talking about. So if you go... So what I've been having to do, let's go like that. Let's make this bigger. So I'm going to try to put a few of these on here just to see what they look like, and especially in different places.
obviously this one's standing out a bit more or obviously this one's standing out a lot more but um that won't be as much of an issue once we either put a drop shadow behind it or a um panel a layer that's semi transparent semi opaque so if there's an argument for photoshop so you don't have to deal with all the little stuff that i'm talking about here it is annoying i just don't know if it's 20 bucks a month uh annoying definitely could be if i used it more so i'm just using the text tool which you get it's this a and you get it by hitting t also if you don't want to click on it Ooh, it could be all lowercase okay so here we've got a row of horde you could save each of these you could export it as an image you get a file export and then choose your file type that you want to which um, should be a, a jpeg the software that we will be using to make this will will use a jpeg uh, to insert into the ebook this one doesn't seem to be on fair ground. Okay, so in order to see these more clearly, um, I'm going to show you a useful, something that you'll, I use all the time. So you'll do a new layer. Um, and then you will reduce the opacity and choose a color. Here we're going to click this to return the foreground color to black. And then we're going to use the foreground color. Okay. So you can see how that dimmed it. And now we put this on the opposite side of the font. Okay. So I've moved this to behind the fonts so that um, they come through more clearly. I think that that green is a little bit dark for our purposes here at the very least. Okay, so I'm gonna brighten, I'm gonna brighten up the green a little bit. Is that too bright? That might be too bright. Okay, I kind of like that. Working in these cramped conditions is not ideal. Okay, so I plan on you on leaving the image nice and bright. I'm not going to do this. I have have done this. I did this on the Among Prey. I don't know if you noticed the difference in the darkness between the cover and the um, painting. But I um, wanted a kind of restrained look to it. So I had a, like this, a semi uh, transparent black layer between the font and the image. Here I'm definitely just doing this to select. I will show you, I'm going to use a drop shadow instead. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so now we've got the hard choice. I feel like I'm not going to go with mostly ghostly. I don't know though. Actually, I kind of like mostly ghostly now. Don't think I'm going to go with ghoulish fright. It's a little bit too clean. So that one's going. I like, I'm liking this one right here. This one is mostly ghostly. And it's funny because I think I said that I was going to delete it. Um, and yet now I'm thinking that it's in the top. I want to see this one larger. So you can zoom in and out by holding control and using the scroll wheel, or you can, there's a percentage down at the bottom. That's obviously way more trouble, but uh, it gives you, does give you finer control. So you can um, 
use the eyeball here to make things go invisible, which can be very helpful in situations like this and many others. That looks, that looks kind of good. Kind of like that. I don't know if it's quite it though. Definitely is more so when we can see the whole thing. Not thinking super rugged's gonna make it, but I'm gonna keep all of these on here just in case I change my mind. The nice thing about the having the transparency or ha having this ability to see it or not see it. Okay, I'm going to go with this one for now. Question is, is the going to be in the same font? That gap is pretty big. I could fix that. I could change that if I wanted to by making these two separate ones. Two separate text fields so I could slide them closer together. And if I go with this, I will probably do that. Let's make another one for the. What, are, what is this? Monstrous attack. Okay, yeah, so we're going to do monstrous attack. Defined by this over here. We've got to choose our color. This one is whatever you chose most recently, the upper left. Ooh. Way too big. Oh my gosh. Control Z undoes as usual. Okay, I was wondering if it might be a little too samey samey if they were the same font, but I actually kind of like it. So we're going to and lock those two together so that whenever we move it, we move both of them once we get it positioned exactly how we want. That's what that does. So you hit this chain, anything anything with this chain in it, it's gonna be locked together. You can't have different, you can't have multiple groups as far as I know that, um, you can't have multiple groups that are separately hooked together, which is kind of a bummer. Okay, but I want this cover to be, okay. So next, my name. <laughs> Let's see. So I went with green, thinking that it, there's not very much green in the cover, so it would stand out. And um, also, it's complementary to the red background, which I'm thinking that that's where I want to put it. I don't ever do really loud titles like this but this one's just calling out to me that it needs uh, a kind of crazy color and a crazier font so we go we're, i'm gonna put a drop shadow behind it i like to use the legacy version whichever you use is up to you the new one will replace it with um with an image of the words so that's something that you, something that you have to watch out for because at some points it will change some things that you can do to text will turn them into images, which means they can no longer be manipulated as text. Now, I believe that this light and shadow transformation that you can get it back to being text, like just by clicking into it as text. I just like to use the, the drop shadow, the legacy version, because it's what I'm used to. So I, but I don't have it going in any direction. I use it more uh, as an outline, I want it nice and dark. So I actually will, oops. Okay, but you have to select the font. And then you select the font that you want to apply the filter to. And then you use it. You can redo it. So you can go to filters, repeat, or you can have it reshow it. If you just want to do it multiple times, and I usually will do that multiple times to get it to the darkness level that I want. And then you can merge them here so that they don't clutter things up. Just click merge down into the next one and then they end up being one then we can that so if you don't link this and you move it here's what you get it 
See, it's a shadow. And I didn't do it on the. You can just hit Control F because I'm doing the exact same thing. And then I did it three times to, so it's even, and I'm just going to merge those three layers that it created down. Okay, so we chain that all together, and now we can move them around, and the shadows will stay with the words. Okay, now we're going to put my name on it, and I think I'm going to go up here. So maybe you can go with the bottom. Um, I will usually go above the title or at the bottom of the page. Both are fine. I don't think I ever go below the title, but I'm not actually 100% sure on that. I want. I don't want my. I don't think I want my name to be in as wild of a font as this. Let's see what it looks like in Monster Attack. One thing to look out for when you choose a font is if it has um, punctuation in it or not. Some of them don't have punctuation at all. And um, so, well, one thing to, if, if you need any punctuation in your title, look out for that when you're selecting your font. Some don't have any punctuation and it'll show up kind of weird. This one has a nice little splatter of a, Punctuation right there. Okay, so how does this look? I don't know. Let's try it at the bottom. Grab the wrong thing. One thing about grabbing things, you can either move the active layer, which will move whichever one's selected here, or you can pick a layer guide, which will move whatever you click on. Now, if you have something that's real sketchy, like um, if you have a font that has a lot of white space in it, you might uh, have a hard time grabbing it. Okay, I don't exactly know how I feel about this. Let's put some drop shadows on it. Let's see what that. Does. So I can just hit Control F because it still is Control F is still linked to repeat drop shadow, just in the filter menu. You can also reshow it, and so then you can select your parameters and change them again if you want. And remember, it's found filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, and I'm using drop shadow legacy. I think this one actually needs more because it's so busy where it sits. And honestly, it could maybe use a panel there instead. Um, so first I'm gonna merge all these shadows down and then I showed you how to create a, a layer uh, that you would turn, that you would adjust the transparency on. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and make one specifically for this. Okay, so we're going to make a new layer. Um, foreground color, which is black. Past these 45%. So this is going to make it the size of the thing. I could go in and, and do it um, differently. Like I could change it to the size that I think that it is, but there's really not much point in that. that. We're going to want to change, um, click off the, um, it's tying together the width and the height to be able to change the proportions of it since we don't want it to be, you know, we want to select the proportion. Okay, so this is an option. I don't think that this is a good, necessarily a great, good option here. Shoot, I need to tie those together. Means I gotta unlink everything else. And I'm having trouble moving these. Usually I just gra drag and drop, but of course, because I'm recording, that's not working. But what you have instead are these arrows, and you can use this, these to move the layers around. Whatever's on the top is in front. 
So I want to move this down so that it's by its drop shadow. And I'm selecting this because it's in front of it, not behind it. We're going to move this down by clicking that arrow down at the bottom. I should resize it to keep it in frame if I'm going to have to keep using it. Normally, you can just drag and drop these. OK. So you can change the opacity right here of any la layer. Let's say we want to make my name stand out, then I think just having this at the bottom looks a little bit weird. Um, one thing that you can do is you can have them at the top and the bottom. You just have to play around with it. You can also use a gradient, but that's beyond what I'm going to be showing you uh, in this tutorial because you have to add a mask and it's a little bit complicated, but um, there are lots of tutorials. Don't ask me how to do stuff. I, I will just have to like, Google it for you. Uh, there are lots of GIMP tutorials. So if you find something, or if you can think of something that you um, want to do, all you have to do is figure out how to phrase it the right way. A little bit busy right there, I think. But then I've added too many drop shadows. So one thing that you can do is you can merge your image up into the drop shadows so that you don't have to keep messing with the chaining, but then it's permanent. You know, whatever you did is permanent. And I do not like the drop shadow here, so that would be bad. I think two is enough because these are these letters are so much smaller. Um, the three having three of them shows up as being darker. Okay, well, I did. I, currently, I am liking my name underneath more, or, which ju I just said that I don't usually do, but I'm liking it here, I think. So, so right now, I'm messing with this um, transparent panel that I put on it. I'm not sure if I want it full brightness or if I want to darken it just a little bit. We're going to move on. I reserve the right to change any of this, but it shows you it works as a demonstration i'm going to show you a trick that this cover does not need but which a cover with a white background would when you go to amazon it has white and if you have a white cover with an image in it then it is hard to see the edges an easy way to fix that is to select all, then select border, and then um, I think you want a pretty thin one. So then zoom in, then we're going to create a new layer, and it's going to be transparent. We're going to call it border. And we're going to use the arrows to move it up because I can't drag and drop. So we want it definitely above the background, whatever the background image is. You can put it at the top if you want to. It just depends on how close to the edge your elements are, whether it matters or not. Then we're going to take a um, the paint can, my border might be a little bit thick. I think that I've used three pixels before and it's been good. 
maybe those were on, I can't remember if those were on smaller color images, or I can't remember if those were maybe on smaller um, images though. Going with six right now, you can mess the opacity if you probably don't want pitch black, but this way if you have a light colored um, background on your image, it'll delineate between whatever page that it's posted on. So we'll deselect, we'll select none, shift control A. And now, you can see it put a little border around it. Okay, so you might be saying to yourself, this looks kind of cheesy. And I agree, and I think the cheesy might be what I'm going for. Probably not going to be what you are going for. Um, but that depends on the, on the sort of novel. Mine's a... Kind of a monster novel. It's not silly and cheesy at all, but I think this catches the eye. Okay, so let's take another image. So this was back when Kindles were only e-ink. You can see that it's all right. Um, its dimensions are smaller. It's only um, six hundred pixels wide. You can see that I have, like I said, a little transparent layer right here for this tagline that we've got, but it's all in your head, but so are they. And um, I've got a little blurb over here. If you can get someone to give you um, a blurb, if you can get a reviewer to give you a blurb, then I think putting it on the color cover does make it look like it's a paperback. See, I went with my name in the lower right-hand corner here. I'm pretty proud of this cover, even though I did very little <laughs> to it. The image is totally carrying it, but I think it looks like a nice cover. I might go with a lighter green. I don't know. It is striking me as a little bit goosebumpish. Probably going to split this off into its own word. Uh, in case, actually, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, why don't I just do that right now? So I'm going to delete the drop shadow on Horde. I'm going to take this off so it's 484. And chain it from the other so we can move it. Okay, now I'm going to make uh, an RD. Did I say it was 434? Got a bad memory. Escape out of it before you hit M. I've typed M into the those back. Okay, so now they're closer together. And I am liking it a lot more. Maybe move it down a little bit. And then we'll apply those drop shadows to it. And we'll apply drop shadows to the first part of Horde as well. We had to get rid of that because we would have had a stray R&D in it. Okay. Merge these down. Don't do that. This is what I want meant to do. Chain these together. So we can move everything around together. Okay, uh, I like it. So it's all saved up, and now we're going to export it. So just go File, 
export you, and then you'll export it as a PNG or a JPEG. Um, we'll change that to JPEG and that'll let us, it'll bring up the right prompt. So I save it usually as 90%. I don't know what's optimal. Uh, you definitely don't need it at 100%. It, it saves you a lot of space just by knocking off a little bit. Okay, so that is it. Um, you can see that you can make a nice looking cover pretty easily with this. And um, as long as you have good art, you don't need to have massive amounts of graphic design skill. And a lot of things that make it look like a legit cover are things that take no skill. You know, having a blurb in there, having a tagline, using a little panel, just having a nice font and using drop shadows. Definitely need some tweaking, but it's got a pretty good base here. Uh, you'll probably see the finished product later. So I hope this helps you have some confidence. It's going to take some, it's going to take some trial and error, but you can get it figured out. And um, you can find many, many tutorials on how to do this stuff. Uh, any specific thing that you would like. So in the next video, we're going to be going over how to format an ebook's actual contents. I have to do the cover first because inserting the cover into the content is part of creating the EPUB file that you will need. And um, we're going to, so we're going to format everything into HTML, add all the meta uh, data, and have a very nice uh, professional ebook in the next episode. I hope this was helpful. Have a great rest of your day.